Is your well-intentioned vitamin routine doing more harm than good? In this video, we'll explore the facts about vitamin D and calcium, when supplements are recommended, and the dangers if taken too much. It may surprise you which one is the most toxic, and how having the wrong balance can cause risks to your heart. There'll be timestamps in the description box below, and stick around to the end where, in my final thoughts, I will tell you what I do for myself and advise my loved ones. Before I start the content, here is my intro and disclaimers. I'm Eloise, I'm a UK pharmacist of 20 years, and I'm enthusiastic about clear, accurate information on medicines and supplements that everyone can understand. The information I provide is for educational information only and is my own opinion. However, I do my best to base it on the most up-to-date clinical evidence. Always contact your own healthcare professional for individual advice on your own personal situation. What is calcium? We all know that calcium is required to build strong bones and teeth and that this process needs maintaining lifelong. However, you also need to keep sufficient levels of calcium in your blood to help with the regulating of muscle contractions, including your heart, and making sure your blood clots normally. You may think of calcium like a hard chalk in calcium carbonate, which is one of the components of bones. However, it dissolves like a salt iron in your blood, similar to sodium. And therefore, your body has to balance keeping this blood level correct, absorbing it from your diet and excreting it via your kidneys. And when levels are low, it can dissolve the calcium back from your bones. Therefore, a chronic lack of calcium could lead to a condition called rickets in children and osteomalacia or osteoporosis later in life. Although these conditions are usually confounded from other factors, such as long-term steroid use, lack of estrogen, and insufficient levels of vitamin D. Although milk and dairy are often claimed to be the main sources of calcium, there can actually be more in leafy green vegetables like spinach and kale, legumes, beans, and sesame seeds. Fish with soft bones can provide sufficient serving of calcium. There are also many fortified foods like soy and almond milk, and even orange juice. Therefore, in Western countries, there is unlikely to be insufficient calcium in a diet. What is vitamin D? Vitamin D helps regulate the amount of calcium and phosphate in the body, both the levels dissolved in the blood and deposited in the bones, and is required to keep the bones, teeth, nerves, muscles healthy. There is also a role in keeping the immune system strong, and there have been links to people with low levels of vitamin D catching and having worse outcomes with viral infections, as well as viral infections depleting the levels of vitamin D in the body. A long-term severe lack of vitamin D can lead to bone deformities, such as rickets in children, and bone pain caused by a condition called osteomalacia in adults. However, prior to these extremes, low levels of vitamin D can cause very non-specific symptoms such as muscle and bone pain, tiredness, fatigue, pins and needles, weakness, worsening allergies, increased risk of viral infections, low mood and sleep problems. Therefore, a vitamin D test is often done when ruling out other medical conditions. The main source of vitamin D comes from your own body changing molecules of cholesterol in the skin on exposure to UV radiation in sunlight although a small amount can be found in food such as oily fish like salmon sardines, red meat, liver, egg yolks and mushrooms. Also, many foods are fortified with vitamin D, such as some fat spreads, breakfast cereals and in the UK, cow's milk and some non-dairy milk products. But most people struggle to get more than 10% of their recommended daily intake from food and are reliant on the sun exposure which can be difficult in the winter for many countries. It's also important to know that along with a decent amount of calcium and vitamin D, regular weight bearing and muscle strengthening exercise helps keep your bone strong and retain the calcium. When do you need to take supplements? For most people, there is hardly ever the need for calcium supplements, as generally a healthy diet will contain enough calcium. However, ensuring this calcium is absorbed and gets to the bones is the main intervention required. And this is where vitamin D becomes the limiting factor for most people. As mentioned previously, 
even with fortified foods, the average person only gets 10% of their recommended daily amount of vitamin D via their diet. And when there are low levels of sunlight in the autumn and winter, many people can end up becoming vitamin D deficient. Therefore, in the UK, the NHS advised that everyone should consider taking a daily vitamin D supplement during the autumn and winter. Also, people at high risk of low sun exposure, such as babies and toddlers and adults who are out housebound, those with darker skin tones or cover their skin should consider daily supplements throughout the year. Vitamin D supplements are available in different forms as there is a complex pathway of metabolism of the vitamin D hormone into various modified active metabolites in your liver and kidneys. Vitamin D2, known as ergocalciferol, is sourced from plants and is usually found in vegan supplements. Although there was some concern that it's not easily absorbed by the gut, recent studies have debunked this. However, these supplements are often much more expensive. Vitamin D3, this is known as cholecalciferol, is the most common form and is often sourced from either oily fish or sheep's lanolin. This is also the form that your body makes in the skin via sunlight. Finally, there is alpha calcidol, which is similar to the end stage metabolite of vitamin D and is usually only given as a supplement for people with kidney failure or hyperparathyroidism. I will quickly run through the dosages for adults, but please check with your healthcare provider. If you're requiring treatment with vitamin D, this is usually always done on the advice of your healthcare professional on the result of a blood test. And this is usually for about six weeks. And they would either give you a higher dose of about 100 micrograms daily, or they may give you it as a, a weekly dose in the um, 2000 micrograms weekly. This can also be written in international units. And obviously they can look like there's a sort of well over tenfold difference. So make sure that you know whether You've got to take the dose in the international units or the micrograms. And if you're ever confused, double check with your pharmacist or with your doctor. When it comes to the prevention with vitamin D, as I mentioned before, there is guidelines for most healthy people to just take a supplement in winter. If this is the case, you're looking just for a supplement with about 10 micrograms daily. Um, which equates to 400 international units daily. And this is usually of the cholecalciferol, but you can look at the, um, the vegan alternative of ergocalciferol if that's your choice. If it comes to the fact that you've previously had a low vitamin D level or you're at, at risk group because you never actually have any sun exposure, then you might want to take the higher dosage all year round which usually is in the strength of 25 to 50 micrograms daily, which is 1,000 to 2,000 international units. But if you are ever concerned over which dosage to take, have a discussion with your healthcare provider. Calcium is only needed when there has been or is likely to be long-term depletion of the bones. And this decision should be discussed with a health professional and assessments done for bone density and if other medication are required. These situations include osteopenia and osteoporosis, long-term oral steroid use, which is treating long-term conditions such as asthma, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease. When calcium supplements are taken, this should always be in combination with vitamin D to ensure that the body absorbs the calcium correctly and that the levels in the blood is maintained while the calcium moves and to the bones to strengthen them. These supplements shouldn't be more than about 1,200 milligrams of calcium daily. And also to make sure that the bones do get replaced and strengthened, there is often a medication such as a bisphosphonate like residronate or alandronic acid prescribed. I like to think of the bisphosphonates being the mortar that helps ensure that the calcium bricks get laid and stuck into the bones. It is important to follow the instructions that calcium supplements and bisphosphonate tablets should be at least four hours away from each other in the stomach, as otherwise the combining that would happen in your bones happens in your gut and neither get absorbed. 
Calcium supplements can also interact with other medication, often reducing their absorption, such as blood pressure medications like calcium channel blockers, iron, thyroxine and antibiotics. So it's always check, best to check with your pharmacist how far away from other medication you take your calcium supplements. Can you overdose on vitamin D and calcium? The simple answer is yes. Even with essential nutrients, there is always a dosage where it will turn into a poison. Both calcium and vitamin D can result in excess calcium into the blood known as hypercalcemia, which can result in many problems for the whole body, including the kidneys, brain and heart. Having other conditions such as hyperparathyroidism, low kidney functions and cancer can also increase the risk of hypercalcemia. Therefore, after a treatment dose of vitamin D, or if you're needing long-term calcium, then your healthcare provider will check your blood calcium levels. And if they're out of range, will assess for the other underlying conditions. Even though vitamin D is fat soluble and stored in the body, the dosages to become toxic are extreme and impossible by diet or sun exposure alone. Even taking treatment dosages longer than the recommended few weeks is unlikely to cause problems either. For healthy people, it would require dosages in excess of 60,000 international units daily for several months, which is the equivalent of taking the weekly treatment dosages daily for months at a time. Vitamin D toxicity, known as hypervitaminosis D, causes its problems from hypercalcemia due to the buildup of calcium in your blood, which will cause nausea and vomiting, weakness, frequent urination, and then the vitamin D toxicity might progress into bone pain, kidney problems, such as the formation of calcium stones. Although the risk of hypercalcemia from vitamin D alone is low, the risk from calcium supplementation can be much higher, even without vitamin D. The effects of high levels of calcium in the blood can affect much of your body. It makes your kidneys work harder as trying to filter it out, causing excess thirst and frequent urination. It can upset your gut, leading to nausea, vomiting and constipation. And brain effects can result in confusion, lethargy and fatigue and potentially depression. Rarely, severe hypercalcemia can intervene interfere with your heart function, causing palpitations and fainting, irregular heart rhythms known as arrhythmias and other heart problems. Even when not at toxic levels, there's a small amount of evidence that long-term calcium supplements without vitamin D may be associated with an increased risk of effects on the heart. However, studies done since that use calcium combined with vitamin D in recommended doses do not show this risk. If you were worried at all because of the um, symptoms that I've just mentioned about hypercalcemia um, and that you have been taking regular vitamin D and calcium supplements, please make sure that you talk to your healthcare provider. They can easily do a blood test to, to check your vitamin D levels, check your calcium levels, check your kidney function and your thyroid function to see if you are at risk of any problems from this. So do not panic. Make sure that you only take the dosages that are recommended on the boxes and um, that I've alluded to here. There is no need to take excess of these. Your body does great at modifying the levels itself. My final thoughts can be summarized with the advice I use for myself and for my loved ones. I once had a low vitamin D and with living in the north of the UK, being fair skinned and staying out of the sun, I do take a vitamin D supplement daily at the higher maintenance dose of 25 micrograms, which is a thousand international units each day. However, I have no need for calcium tablets as I have a diet with green vegetables and some dairy, as well as some moderate exercise. For my loved ones, I also suggest an over-the-counter vitamin D, especially in the winter, but to never exceed this dose unless taking a short replacement course on the result of a blood test from a healthcare professional. The only time I recommend calcium supplements is when a doctor has determined a risk of osteoporosis and that the calcium tablets contain vitamin D. 
I also encourage anyone with osteoporosis or osteopenia to take a bisphosphonate such as allodronic acid if prescribed, as this ensures the calcium ends up going into the bones. If you would like me to do a video on bisphosphonates and their benefits, risks and advice on how to take them, then leave a comment below and I will make one. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Please like and subscribe and do all those YouTube -y things for the algorithm and have a look at my previous videos on other subjects I have covered, such as omega-3 and fatty acids and melatonin supplements, as well as in this series, can you overdose on vitamin A toxicity? And I'm looking for ideas for other supplements that you would like me to look at, can you overdose on? Thank you.